Hi everyone, this is Dear Hallmark. This is my space to nerd and geek out over all things Hallmark Channel movies, TV shows, and stuff. My name is Dara, and today we are going to be talking about The Perfect Pairing, which stars Nazanin Contractor and Brennan Elliott. Can I just say, finally, I have my winter. I have my snow. I have my coming out of my, my breath. I have the the heat, the fall, whatever that is, it's like coming out. I have that, I have blankets, I have ice, I have chills, I have it all, and I'm grateful. Off the top, that alone gave this a 0.5 bump up in crown rating. But if you haven't seen it yet, let me tell you what it's about. So Nazanin Contractor plays Christina Joy Osborne, who is a food and wine critic, very harsh, very persnickety, very much a perfectionist. She plays no games, takes no prisoners. She did a, a harsh review on this one winery called the Hollingbrook Winery. I don't know why I'm so many over my words for that. The Hollingbrook Winery. And because of that review, it really hit their business hard. So they're trying to be on the up and up from that. So she gets an assignment to go to a winter wine festival in upstate New York. And so she goes and some circumstances happen where she, like, she accidentally leaves her purse on the train. She, um, the, what's it called? Shuttle leaves her, like leaves with her luggage in the car without her. It was a whole kerfuffle. And so she's without her luggage. She's without her purse. And she ends up mistakenly going to the Hollingbrook Winery. And when she finds that that's where she is, she tries to go back to the hotel where she's supposed to be, but she slips on a patch of ice. And she slips because she is wearing these black stiletto booties that are fierce. I'm talking Devil Wears Prada. You hear me? I'm talking Cruella. They are fierce. And she's been wearing them throughout the entire beginning of the movie and then she just slips and falls hits her head and she gets the amnesia so this movie is in essence amnesia wrapped in ice wine and i liked it i enjoyed it i found myself blushing and not even knowing until the commercial breaks and then when i felt my face rest it was like oh i was smiling and even know. Um, you know, throughout the course of the movie, as she's trying to figure out who she is, her and Brennan Elliott's character, whose name is Michael, they get closer together. She gets close with his daughter. His daughter is the embodiment of frosting on a, on a sugar cookie, sprinkles on ice cream, and a maraschino cherry on a milkshake. She's just sweet as sweet potato pie. Um, loved her. I loved the relationship of Brennan with his daughter. This was something I was thinking about. So my review of Coyote Creek Christmas with Ryan, one of my biggest critiques was that I felt like we didn't see Ryan enough as a father in the movie because he wasn't with the child enough. We didn't see him do dad things um, enough in that movie for me. And however, with this movie, I felt like because of the way Brennan approached the role, like just who he was, his casual nature, he approached the, the role so well that I didn't need to see scenes of just him and his daughter. I could I could believe him as her father. Does that, you know what I mean? So I loved their relationship. I loved the winery dynamic of, I think it was Michael's brother, that other guy. Diane, who's on staff at the winery, and his dad. So a point of contention throughout this whole movie is that Michael is trying to make ice wine in memory of his deceased wife, but yet his father is kind of bucking up against him about it. And so, okay, you know, we needed a source of conflict. Okay, you know, it's, um, they're getting ready for a tasting party to kind of regenerate business to the winery and they are going to premiere this ice wine um i will say it was the better of the ice wine movies did you see lifetime's 
an ice wine Christmas. Whoa, that thing was janky. And I reviewed it on the podcast under the title, Dear Lifetime, It's Christmas. That thing. So I'm grateful this was better than that. <laughs> I'll leave it there. I'm grateful this was better than that. Um, oh, the, so when he takes her into the, the ice wine room, I was immediately brought back to a time that I was at an ice bar in Oslo. I had the beautiful opportunity to study abroad during a summer of my grad school program. And we went to Scandinavia. We, home base was Copenhagen, Denmark. And then we did a week long study tour in Sweden and Norway, studying architectural sites, learning about Scandinavian designers, things like that. Um, and so one evening, you know, we were free and the classmates, we all wrangled together and went to an ice bar and it was gorgeous. It was beautiful. It was an experience. I put photos of that on Instagram if you want to check it out. But I, like when he brought her into the ice wine room, covered her in the blanket, that reminded me of the coat I was wearing in the ice bar. It was, I love that. I love that so much. Um, I love Nazneen and Brennan together. Beautiful. They, they had beautiful chemistry. It wasn't like fire in the eyes. <laughs> it was sweet, like the ice wine. It was sweet, like the cookies she made, you know? And I love that it was one plot, like one plot point, I feel like throughout, like it was consistent. Um, she, I mean, granted there were messages in terms of like, you know, seizing the moment, living for the now, um, not trying to, you know, go off recipe, if you will, just go off recipe. What is what I feel like is the major message of that movie, which I think is cute. Um, I'm looking down here at my notes. I think I, I think I touched on, oh, the way that she got her memory back. I like that. I like that. Um, I'm about to spoil it if you haven't seen it yet. I like that when they were in the store, the way that like she was triggered just by hearing her own name. And then it went through this almost like a flip book of a montage of just who she is, why she is, where she is, you know? Um, can we talk about the homies? Merlot Cabernet suit during the tasting. <laughs> And her like sheen emerald green dress that was floor length. <laughs> it was floor length. <laughs> oh, I took great pride and joy in that. Mind you, I had nothing to do with them wearing it, but I just took pride and joy in it because I want to wear that dress. Now, Christina's boyfriend is a bum. He is a well-dressed, financially stable bum, but he was just annoying. <laughs> he, and I think that means he played his part well. He was just irking. I didn't want him to be there. I didn't want her to have a boyfriend. Why did she have to have a boyfriend? I don't think he added anything to this. She should have just been single, ready to mingle, like a dollar bill, you know what I'm saying? So those are kind of my pl my plot points. Those are kind of the things that I was thinking about with this movie. My crown rating, it's a four. Again, Winter Alone gives it that half crown bump up from The Wedding Veil for me. So this gets a four. What would have elevated this movie for me would have been some banter, sarcasm, pettiness, quirkiness, awkwardness, a la Love Strikes Twice, Gingerbread, Miracle, Unexpected Christmas, Eight Gifts of Hanukkah. That would have elevated it. I'm, I'm such a sucker for a sarcastic something or other. So I would have loved it even more if we had some banter, which is what I think the Wedding Veil had going for it, which I appreciated. 
but um oh shout wait can we just talk about my shirt really quick okay so it says hold on do you see this it says once a king or queen of narnia always a king or queen of narnia and it's crop top drop tops chilling in a chair with my flip flops so <laughs> <laughs> so um that's all i have to say about the perfect pairing let me know what you thought did this movie do it for you did you not care are you just like can we just fast forward to the second wedding veil movie already like how are you feeling um be sure to subscribe to the podcast because i do review these movies on the podcast as well but i I go a little bit more in depth than I do here in the on the YouTube channel, and we also talk about um, like seasonal the seasonal movies, what Hallmark is doing or not doing with these seasonal movies, and I actually play a voice message that someone um, turned in about why they think. Hallmark isn't doing the seasonal movies anymore. So you want to check out the episode, the perfect pairing episode of the podcast to hear that discussion. Um, and be sure to follow Dear Hallmark on Instagram. Like I said, you'll find the ice bar photos from my trip in Oslo, Norway on there and other little tidbits and stuff. I do fun prompts, go live randomly. I, sometimes I do reactions to movies that I may be watching at the time, post them on there. So there's lots to behold and be and, and have on Instagram. Um, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you just if you just keep popping by and stopping over, and you're not becoming family, well, you better come on in, take your shoes off, hang your coat up, and get a plate, okay? And press subscribe. So you guys, that's all I got to say. I'm going to talk to you guys in the next video where we're going to talk about North to Home, our Hallmark Movies and Mysteries offering for the new year, starring Kimberly Sestad, Erica Durrance, and Tori DeVito. So I will talk to you guys in the next video.